Hey, it's Angie Atkinson with QueenBeing.com, and today we're going to talk about anxiety and the way it affects you after and during narcissistic abuse. All right, let's get started. So if you've ever been in a relationship with a narcissist, then you already know that one of the most common side effects is the crippling kind of anxiety that they inspire in you. It's the kind of anxiety that makes you want to stop talking to people that maybe you once felt really close to. Um, and it makes you end up focusing on the narcissist's needs, wants, or other manipulative bullshit. Pardon my French. Anyway, so as you go through it, you know, there are symptoms and dealing with the symptoms that you experience once you've admitted it to yourself, <laughs> uh, you know, that you've become a source of a narcissistic supply, you know, it's one of the first ways that you can really begin to heal. Okay, so some people find that standard anxiety management techniques just aren't enough and that they just need a little help from like anti-anxiety drugs prescribed by their doctors or not. Of course, some people might take that option if they can afford it, right? Um, and still others prefer to go drug free, obviously, when it comes to managing anxiety, you know, because gaslighting causes anxiety, among other things. and you know, if you're still in the relationship, it's going to keep being, it's going to keep happening regardless of the medicine sometimes. You know, obviously not any of us are immune to the mental and physical crap that comes with anxiety, right? And so we shouldn't really have to put up with living that way, but even though we do when we stick around with our narcissists, right? Uh, however, with that being said, I think it's important to point out a few different things. Number one, the stress on your body caused by narcissistic abuse can literally kill you. You feel me? Kill you. <sighs> yeah, I'm not kidding. Okay. But with that being said, let's really quickly just review a few things that will help us to um, decide, are you having anxiety or not? Okay. Uh, so while everybody's different, there are certain symptom of, symptoms of anxiety that are just pretty common. Okay. That most people who suffer anxiety will, will find themselves having, you know, probably three of the four that I'm going to share with you. Okay. Let me know if you recognize the symptoms. If you maybe do you feel like you're having anxiety? I'd love it if you talk about it in the comments for me. Okay. All right. So what will happen is that your breathing will change. Um, that's number one. So you're going to have like a fast rapid heartbeat. I'm sorry, breathing. You know, you'll start breathing a little more fast, right? Um, uh, you will, I guess, fast and rapid are the same thing, right? <laughs> anyway, all right. Um, anyway, you'll feel it in your gut, right? That's number two. So, um, you know, oh, and uh, by the way, I forgot to say the breathing changes and the heart beats fast. Those are both part of number one, okay? Number two, you're going to feel it in your gut, right? So it's like an, om like an overwhelming sense of doom in your stomach almost or in your chest and, you know, in the pit of your stomach. It's like a nauseated tightness. Does that make any sense to you? Um, like you can't, sometimes you can't eat, sometimes you could do nothing but eat and it feels like it never fills the pit. Depends on yourself and your particular reaction to this stuff, okay? Along the same lines, number three, your body goes on alert. So tense, tense muscles, having trouble paying attention and focusing even on simple tasks, uh, you know, that anxiety can cause. And then of course, number four, that you only notice these symptoms at certain times, so you can have all of them or you can have some of them and, you know, they can be brought on by a trigger, okay, when that, that kind of makes the trigger trip, right? Right. So before I continue on with the rest of this video, I just want to stop for just a quick second and I want to focus on something in particular, okay? Now I can, I'm going to link for you to another video that I've done that actually talks about how to manage anxiety. Okay, but then I want to go into a, a more specific part of this and, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. But first, I want to say a couple things. First, I'm, you know, you all know I'm a life coach, a certified life coach. I, I'm not a healthcare professional and so you have to realize that there are many health problems that can cause anxiety. Okay, so before you assume that yours is normal, go see your doctor. I cannot offer any medical advice and nothing that I say on this channel or anything else should ever be taken as medical advice. Okay, so I want to put that out there. So certain health problems that might cause anxiety in you um, might include you having an undiagnosed heart condition or, or disorder. Might include 
anemia, diabetes, problems with thyroid glands. So assuming that your anxiety is produced by your interactions with the narcissist, carry on. Okay, if, you're, if you may have one of those conditions and you're not sure, or you just want to be safe, go see your doctor. Please remember, I don't give medical advice here, and I'm just putting that out there for you. Okay, all right. Next up, we're going to talk about what happens um, to us as we go through this kind of abuse, and as we come out of it even, uh, how we end up having a little problem with our attention spans. All right, let's get to it. So researchers recently revealed a new link between anxiety and lower attention, s struggling with attention. And so, you know, this kind of all goes together with our PTSD stuff, right? Uh, so let's talk about that, shall we? Okay. So the first thing to know is that anxiety can affect your attention span, okay? Researchers have found that there is a connection. And so what could the connection between these two conditions be? Hmm? All right, well, if you have anxiety, then you're more than likely to have attention disorders, according to researchers who believe that there is a brain connection between them, okay? Now, initial studies on teens reveal that they're more likely to have both issues together, okay? So, obviously, we're not teens, or some of us aren't anyway. So, if you have trouble, you know, concentrating, or if you have anxiety that, you know, sometimes... <laughs> Look at me. Anyway, I don't have anxiety today. I am having a little trouble concentrating on this moment. Just kidding. No, really though. Um, if you have anxiety or trouble concentrating, you have to consider these discoveries that I have recently picked up. Not my discoveries, discoveries of researchers. All right. So the link between anxiety and attention. Researchers at the University of Texas actually discovered that, um, you know, your anxiety and your attention span are linked. Makes sense, doesn't it? They found that people who have anxiety are also more likely to perform worse in school because of attention issues. They saw a connection between anxiety and other mental health issues like depression and suicide. You know, the researchers say that in some cases, um, anxiety first appeared while, you know, in other cases, it was the attention span that caused the anxiety. So basically, what, what the deal is, is that if you can recognize one of those issues, then you can also often find and deal with the second one a lot more effectively, okay? So people who had issues concentrating were also more likely to have anxiety. Interesting, right? Experts believe that, that, that there's a deeper reason for this, like I said, in your brain. So number two, being unconscious anxiety. So a lot of um, the researchers find that unconscious anxiety can explain some of the attention deficit disorders out there. Okay, interestingly enough, I think you may know this about me, but I recently <laughs> came out as someone with ADD, so I found this especially interesting as someone who's also survived narcissistic abuse. Um, I think that a lot of us may have something like ADD, and yeah, interesting, right? Okay, next up. That's crazy. I, I can't, the connections are insane when you think about what, you know, the root of it all might be, right? It, it, it's crazy. All right, anyway, unconscious anxiety occurs when you don't recognize that you're actually suffering from worry and concern, okay? You have trouble concentrating, so you blame it on your poor attention span. However, in reality, your unconscious anxiety is actually preventing you from being able to focus. Hello, has anybody, does anybody know when we go into our little fog and we have our, you know, we just kind of go off in our head, you know, yeah, that's a coping technique uh, that, that we use in order to escape and, and it turns into um, a, a symptom of PTSD, which causes us to kind of be numb and foggy and not really there, uh, you know, that's a big fancy word, but y you can, what, what really happens is that y you're, you're surviving. And so if you're being constantly emotionally abused by a narcissist, you might find the narcissist is, um, you know, is, it's, it's happening when you become, when you're getting attacked by the narcissist specifically, or it's happening when you're fearing an attack by the narcissist, so you go numb and you space out so you don't have to be there to feel it, you feel me? And I, I'm talking about emotionally, of course, at this point, okay? So it's interesting how that works. Now the root of the anxiety, of course, can be buried among deeper emotional issues, just like the whole thing we just discussed. Then there's number three, the overlapping symptoms, okay? The symptoms of anxiety and, and ADD actually, or ADHD, can overlap. So the shared symptoms can include having trouble concentrating and focusing on one task, uh -huh, right? They also include not having control over your impulses, being irritable, being scared a lot, and being afraid to try new things, you know? 
uh, wanting everything to stay the same, right? Been there, been there, over it. <laughs> All right, it's not always easy to tell apart the anxiety and the attention disorders. Okay, so number four, you can get treatment, you can get help. Okay, if you or someone you care about is dealing with this, you know, help can bring real benefits. Like I've said before, you might want to take medication, you might not, um, you know, that, but it can help. Um, another treatment option is therapy to adjust your behavior. That only works if you're not a narcissist, of course, um, <laughs> you know. And, uh, you know, meditation and relaxation are also, of course, r great ways to do this. Um, you know, and I think that, you know, uh, uh, other good ways to get focused and find yourself back in the moment include the four corners technique I've taught you before where you look at each corner of your screen and you follow it around for two minutes, right? And then there's the, um, the one where you have an affirmation where you can think to yourself, you know, I now cancel that thought and replace it with this affirmation of my real desire, whatever, okay? Or the 10 things you're grateful for always works and the, um, you know, three things you love about yourself never hurts either, right? Might as well be beautiful and happy while you're at it, right? Okay, number five, the role of learning disabilities. It's important to avoid overlooking learning disabilities that can exacerbate anxiety and attention issues. You know, and what people say is that all three issues can occur together. Okay, for example, someone might have dyslexia, anxiety, and ADD doesn't make that person stupid or bad or wrong, it makes that person someone dealing with those things, and those things are all treatable up to a point, okay? Or at least things you can cope with up to a point, okay? Researchers say that, you know, commonly these things happen in, in groups of three. So, interesting. Uh, anyway, in some cases, learning disabilities also are not caught right away when a child starts school, so kids are sometimes able to compensate for them, especially in, in bigger, less personal settings when it comes to school. So the issues will go undiagnosed, like forever. However, anxiety and attention disorders can be worse with, when someone has a learning disability. So by focusing on the learning issues, you know, then these kids can have a chance to succeed in school and reduce their anxiety, but also adults can have a chance to succeed at work and reduce their anxiety. So again, focusing on the thing that you can control and not the thing that you can't control, right? Someone with a learning disability, you know, might try to avoid responsibilities, might try to avoid um, occasions where they have to read out loud or do something, you know, out loud. Uh, in addition, you know, that same kid might be so stressed out or a same adult even might be so stressed out that they struggle to, con you know, to deal with even the smallest tasks. And again, all of this can be... <laughs> so funny all of this can be found in ADD and all of this can be found in anxiety that's caused by narcissistic abuse see so you have to wonder like anyway okay it's important to note that adults as well as children can suffer from all three of these conditions okay and and adults can spend years being misdiagnosed or not getting the proper treatments personally I was misdiagnosed as a child myself uh, didn't find out I had ADD until I was 35. No shnikes, y'all. All right, <laughs> so something to think about. Anyway, my point is, a you know, have if you have been diagnosed with ADD or you think you have the symptoms of, of ADD, it can be, definitely can be comorbid with um, anxiety. De anxiety is often caused for people, is it almost, almost everyone who's involved with a narcissist has some level of anxiety let's be honest okay and 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 we also a lot of us especially when we've been involved a long time we're also experiencing PTSD which again can roll right back around and plug into that anxiety and the attention stuff okay so my point is if there is something that you can fix in your life and make your life better if you could find a way to focus if you can find a way to change the things that are limiting you now well, then you can move forward and you don't have to worry anymore about what anyone, anyone thinks, about what anyone wants. You can learn to take back your life. You take every baby step you can to make yourself the best possible and most capable version of yourself, and then you can snap out of it. All right? It works, I promise you. Okay? I'm going to wrap up for today. I hope you all have had a wonderful week so far. Uh, tomorrow is Wednesday. Who knows? Maybe tomorrow will be Wild Wednesday. Either way, I'll see you for a vlog early and a later video in the day. Okay? Uh, if you have questions, comments, concerns, things you want to talk about, I would love to know about those in the comments below. 
Um, also, I would love it if you would subscribe. I think I'm pointing the right way this time. <laughs> and uh, or also down depending on which platform you're on here. Um, as always, if you are interested in learning more about narcissism, narcissistic abuse recovery, or NPD, you can subscribe to my channel or visit queenbeing.com uh, or you can get personal coaching with me one-on-one -on -one at narcissisticabuserecovery.online and you can visit NarcissismSupportCoach.com if you would like to get my free five-day email course designed for narcissistic abuse survivors and check out my books at BooksAngieWrote.com. All right? Okay, great. Uh, as always, thank you so much for being there. Thank you for being a part of my life. Thank you for letting me be a part of your life and a part of your recovery. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. I will see you tomorrow. Cheers. Hugs and love. <laughs>